Well, another week is gone. You know, <laughs> I mean, let me tell you, when the AFL debuted last night, you know, I mean, things happened last night. Not all of it was good. Um, you know, I have a big goofy smile on my face, but it's not for the it's not for the reasons you think. You think I'm excited about all of this? No, not particularly. Um, first things first. I don't even know who's going to take on West Michigan in the GLAF championship. I don't know. Like the Toledo Shamrocks have called them, are calling themselves the Ohio Shamrocks now. I don't even know. If they beat Tri-State last night, the Detroit-Ohio boom game got canceled. So good old, good old shenanigans from the GLAF, Great Lakes Arena football. So there's that. I don't want to talk about the AFL just yet, you know, so we'll get to that in a second. AIF. You know, you got the Amarillo guys, you know, Robert Reyna, you know, going on a whole Facebook journey because Amarillo is not very good. You know, they were competitive. They're competitive, but they're just – they're probably not going to win the game, a, a game in the AIF this year. They lost to Corpus Christi again, 48-34. Columbus actually had a close game against Harrisburg, so Harrisburg got close, but they didn't beat Columbus, you know, 42-34 there. Um, that was a pretty good game, you know, this weekend. IFL just finished up, like the last game just finished up, and oh my gosh, we we can't we can't go into the stands. Five players from Bay Area and San Diego are probably going to be suspended for like the rest of the year, maybe even longer. A lady got her wig pulled off, her weave, whatever. You can't go into the stands. <laughs> we, we, I thought we learned this lesson last year, that you cannot go into the stands. thought we learned our lesson. Nobody learned their lesson from last year. Oh, my goodness gracious. Um, rest of the IFL games, um, to talk about really the highest scoring game of the weekend was the Tulsa Quad City game. Very entertaining game. Tulsa, I mean, they they are getting their act together. They're looking like a really good team. San Antonio with an upset victory over the Frisco Fighters. Very late, San Antonio was able to get, you know, what they needed, and these two teams will face off yet again next Saturday. So Frisco, you know, finally loses a game. And, uh, again, this is a long time coming because Frisco just has been relying on T.J. Edwards a bit too much. So, you know, there's that. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Oh, the Fargo game. The Fargo game was a lot more um, close than I thought it would be. You know, Sioux Falls still didn't beat Massachusetts. They still did not beat the Pirates because the Pirates have a roster that's just clicking on all cylinders, you know, aside from last week. But, they, you know, they're clicking on all cylinders right now. And everything like this. Sioux Falls is getting close, getting close. And they got some dogs down there in South Dakota for the, for the storm, but ultimately it wasn't enough. <sighs> oh my goodness gracious. I, I don't even know at this point. You know, you look at you look at teams like you know Tucson, which you know, I'm surprised Billy Back and crew. Are you know struggling the way they are, but they're struggling. They're struggling. They're struggling. They're struggling. Duke City is still, eh, still, eh, you know, for gladiators. So I don't know what's gonna happen, you know, with Duke City because they they just they just have not looked very good all year long, and now. And now we're getting into the clutch of things because, you know, right now you have Vegas still unbeaten, Bay Area is still unbeaten, Northern Arizona looking really good. Yes, San Diego has dropped two straight, but, you know, Arizona's getting back into it as well. So it's going to be a little bit more of a dog fight out west yet again. 
um, in the IFL's Eastern Conference, you know, Bay Area, not Bay Area, I mean, Great Bay is also looking really good. Again, 4-1. and one. I don't think you really expected them to be 4-1. and one. Yeah, I know they beat Iowa, who's, you know, not not good. You know, they don't have a good defense at all, but, you know, it is what it is. <sighs> oh, my goodness. The NAL, not much to say here. You know, Carolina beat the Brakes off of Sioux City, which is very surprising. And then the Idaho Horsemen beat the Brakes. Well, they were beating the Brakes off of Oklahoma, but Oklahoma came back and, like, Idaho scored like 41 in like the first three quarters and it was like 41 to eight, but you know, Oklahoma did the thing where they tried to come back, put up a bunch of garbage points. So honestly, I don't even know who's good. Who's the worst in the NAL right now. It's probably going to be the Oklahoma flying aces, honestly, um, who, you know, did not, did not get the memo, you know, about, you know, you know, certain things, there's, there's still some issues with Oklahoma right now um, that cannot be understated. Like Idaho had to pay for them, apparently, to get up to Nampa. But um, at least that's what I saw in a post. I mean, at least good hospitality by Idaho, though. But, you know, Oklahoma, um, yeah, still some money issues there, I believe. That's, that's definitely a telltale sign. You know, and uh, yeah, I feel games this week were pretty good. You know, Northern Arizona Tucson again, definitely a struggle type game. Uh, Quad City Tulsa was definitely probably the best game of the weekend, um, and the other game was probably the best game of the weekend. Let's just start with the game that looked like the game of the week. You know, the Orlando Predators and the Albany Firebirds in the AFL 3.0. Uh, man, you had an injury that was rough. Uh, hopefully, uh, again, the broadcast. Uh, uh, let's, let, I mean, it was 6 to 59. Albany gets the win in OT, which first things first, overtime wasn't even played the correct way, you know, um, the overtime rules were a bit different for some reason, which does not make any sort of sense. How do you mess up overtime rules? I don't know. The issue, the other issue is that the NFL Network said, nah, we are not broadcasting these games this week. And now people were speculating, oh, well, there was money issues and yada, yada, yada. I just... It's probably the money issues because, you know, um, we'll talk about it a little bit in a moment. But, yeah, yeah, I, I, I probably believe that, you know, considering in the past the AFL had to pay, you know, the old AFL anyway, both 1.0 and 2.0 had to pay, you know, the NFL Network, or at least 2.0 at least, they had to pay the NFL Network, you know, to broadcast games and stuff like that. And it just did not work out. We all know this because, you know, they flip-flopped around CBS and, and all sorts of, you know, different streaming services and not like that. But uh, Vire or whatever it was called, and, you know, you had um, the AFL's own site, the AFL Live site, which was not great. Um, both of those both of those platforms were not great for me to try and stream the games Life, I'm telling you, um, buffering abound. You know, you got audio issues. You got you got everything under the sun, broadcast issue wise. That people like to bring up about these games last night in AFL 3.0. Um, but yeah, um, definitely, uh, it should have been Orlando Albany on the NFL Network. At least, you know, it should have been, but ultimately something happened to where that was not going to happen, you know, with the NFL draft and everything like that. Um, let's go to the Louisiana-Philadelphia game. Um, yeah, this is rough. We're talking only three Philadelphia players showed up. 
to Louisiana because the rest of the team, you know, got blackballed, you know. You know, players not getting their belongings out of hotels. You know, Lee Hutton apparently saying, hey, do not give these guys their stuff back. We're cutting all these players. We are not paying them $1,000 for this game. We are not getting them on a flight. We're not doing anything, really. We're going to have Tyrone Washington from Dallas for the Dallas Falcons of the AL2 say, hey, we need somebody up here to play this game in Louisiana, which again, moved to Lafayette. And the nets there were, you know, atrocious. The side walls were also atrocious. We're talking, there was people there, but was it the full capacity? Absolutely not. It was rough. And, you know, 53-18, you know, that, that, that's definitely a telltale sign of things to come because, again, the Dallas Falcons were supposed to play somebody else this weekend. But, um, yeah, basically, Tyrone Washington is trying to say, oh, well, I made this team in 24 hours. You cannot say that, sir. You cannot say you made a team in 24 hours. You brought all your players from Dallas, the Dallas Falcons, up to Philadelphia somehow, and, you know, y'all played. And it was rough. Nashville's field looks great. They didn't broadcast this game between Minnesota and Nashville, and who would want to watch that anyway because that game was a rough, rough game to even, you know, look at. Um, the soul, the soul will, will be just, it's just, it's just, it's just rough for Philadelphia. Like, I, I genuinely am, you know, hoping for the best for these guys that were supposed to play for the Philadelphia soul. And, you know, you know, say what you want. I do not like behavior that is, you know, you know, borderline tier three. You've seen me rant on it in the past with, you know, the COVID league, or, you know, the AIFA last year, the Mississippi Raiders led AIFA last year and the year before, or the um, or the AFA or anything, you know, that's tier three, and that's just bad tier three. We're talking really, really bad. AL2 a little bit this year, you know, AIF a little bit this year, and AL a little bit this year and years past. This is, this is a combination of a lot of things that we've talked about in the past four to six years. It's rough. This is disgusting. I do not, I do not think that this should be, you know, occurring. But it's going to keep going anyway. Are these players, are all players on all 16 teams going to get $1,000 a week for 10 games? Probably not. Probably not. Are players going to have the adequate housing, you know, and tickets and, 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 you know, plane tickets and stuff like that? Probably not. Some teams will, some teams will not. You have Oregon, you know, having also a bad net looking situation. The nets were painted black. Couldn't see them. And I think only, and I swear, from, from one angle that I saw, or at least the picture of, there was only one set of nets it wasn't two it wasn't on both sides of the field it was only one i swear that's what i'm that's what i looked at that's what i saw i may be completely wrong on that but i saw one set of nets and then you have you know issues with the wi-fi you know no wi-fi connection can't broadcast the game anywhere you know, I mean, it was it was just rough. You know, the CIF teams are in here and they look completely out of place. You know, like Billings at least is all right, but you know, Rapid City, you know, the Iowa, the Council Bluffs version, Wichita, they look completely out of place. Shout out to my boy Red Shields. He is on Wichita. Um, he's a friend of mine from you know years and years past down in Pittsburgh and everything like that. But um, yeah, no. This is this is this is not what you want to see. Uh, my goodness, man! I I genuinely do not know what in the world was going on out here, man. This was this was a rough, rough week 
for the AFL. Now it's turning into a rough week for the whole sport. You know, now with this nonsense for all the Bay Area San Diego game and everything like that, and we still gotta keep going with the AFL stuff. Like there's still t- there's still nine more weeks of this nonsense. I just I just don't know, man. I just don't know. Will the AFL succeed? I don't know. You got people staunchly defending this version of the AFL. I do not know why. You would think you'd be defending the players and, and the coaches and then the you know the guys, you know, that are on the field each and every week, you know, the owners and Lee Hutton and Jarrell Gaines and those guys, they're not on the field every single week. We all know this. They're all trying. We're, they're all trying their best, but their best has been a far set best, if you get what I'm saying. You know, there's only a couple of teams here that I think could be moving up anywhere. You know, you got Albany, Orlando, West Texas, Nashville. Like, those teams can move on up and do something. But, like, the Georgia Soul, who don't have a home arena, don't have any home games, looked rough against West Texas today. Yeah, no, no. The CIF teams, absolutely not. The CIF teams from 2023, absolutely not. <laughs> like, the CIF should have rolled forward with, the, with those four teams, maybe Iowa, you know, and maybe some other teams as well. But even though that would have been nice, you know, to, you know, have the CIF still stick around for 2024, I personally would have had. Personally would have loved that more than, you know, seeing some of these AFL teams. Because there's, there's some poor, poor – things going on here and eight teams have not played their first home game yet we've seen in some of these preseason games that they've had where it looks kind of rough looking at you wichita looking at you you know I, I i i don't know man i don't know what to say about the afl 3.0 that hasn't already been said because i just it's a lot to take in from this week because, again, the soul situation is probably one of the biggest things. And that's not even the old. That's not even everything. You have West Texas still dealing with NAL fallout. Um, So similar to Bloomington and Sioux Falls from like six or seven years ago, you know, that whole thing in which Sioux Falls got to play. But Bloomington, they died. And then um, I think it was the Axemen. For Bemidji, the Minnesota team, they died. And in West Michigan, you know, it was also a thing, I think, you know, back then, in the I, or at least they were trying to get in the IFL back then, but then they went off and now they're doing their own thing. So, yeah, this might end up the NAL and West Texas. They're in fighting, you know, West Texas got to play today against Georgia, but, um, you know, there's all sorts of legal stuff, you know, that has to be settled. And we don't know what that legal stuff is going to, you know, do for West Texas. So, because, again, they only played one year in the NAL. That's that's a big problem, you know, for a team. And I was wondering if there was something going to be done about that anyway, because, again, West Texas left, you know, after their first year. In the NAL, so that that was definitely something. I was like, why did the NAL do something earlier? I was thinking, why did the NAL do something earlier? But again, who knows? Trying to stop West Texas from playing at the eleventh hour did not work, and we'll see if the NAL tries again because that's also a problem. You know, West Texas looks legit, but that's a problem that the AFL has to fix. So there's a bunch of problems in the AFL 3.0 right now that have finally come to a head this week because the league has started their first week. So I, I'm going to get on the bat here. I'm not going to say any more. I'm going to upload this, take the rest of the week off, and I will see you back here Sunday night, next Sunday night, for more, and hopefully things improve by next week. Until then, take care, have a good night, see you soon, guys.